Today, I'm going to tell you some important facts that maybe you'll be hearing for the first time. Facts that the media does not show you. I will talk about the man that many of you do not know very well. I will talk about the man that many people in the West have the wrong idea about. I will tell you about the man that God chose to be the final messenger of his message. The man who got sent as a mercy for mankind and for all that exists. I will tell you about the man that was known amongst his enemies in Mecca as the truthful and the trustworthy. I will tell you about him so that you can judge for yourself and ask yourself, was this person a liar and criminal that ignorant people have accused him of being? Really, for me, it's difficult to know what I should begin with. His patience, his integrity, his mercy, his mercy with his enemies, his mercy with Bedouins, or his mercy with children, or his mercy with animals. Yeah, even animals. The Prophet Muhammad was so merciful that if he saw a cat while he was washing himself before going to prayer, he would lower his bowl of water down for the cat to drink from. He emphasized that people should always be considered of their own mental state. He said, do not stare at a lever, because that would remind him of his affliction and hurt him further. There was once a Bedouin that came to the Prophet Muhammad wanted to catch up with him. And when he got close to the Prophet Muhammad, he pulled him aggressively by his dress in such a way that the dress rubbed hard against his neck, leaving a mark. So what exactly did this Bedouin want? He said to the Prophet, Oh Muhammad, give me some of the wealth that Allah has given you. What? Is this a good way to ask someone for money? What would you do if someone asked you to give the money in this way? If the Prophet Muhammad was an angry man and criminal as is accused by ignorant people, how would he have treated this man? If he wasn't an angry man and criminal, he would destroy this man immediately, or at least would tell him, get lost. He did not say arrogantly, you don't know who I am, I am the messenger of Allah, get out. But because of his mercy, the Prophet turned around, smiled, and he ordered that the man be given something. This was the manner of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His servant Anas, may Allah pleased with him, said, I served the messenger of Allah for 10 years. I never heard him complain about anything I did. Why did you do this or that? He never criticized me for anything at all. By Allah, he never even said to me off. And his wife Aisha, may Allah pleased with her, said, The messenger of Allah never complained about food. If he liked it, he ate it. If he didn't like it, he simply left it. He did not say, why don't you cook something? He would not make problems and stress for his wife because of that. Rather than that, he would just say, in this case, I'm fasting. The Prophet was gentle in his speech, and he always spoke softly. He respected whomever he was talking with, even if this person was one of his enemies. When the Prophet began to call the people to Islam publicly, the unbelievers from his tribe were outraged because they felt this new religion insulted their ancestors and the idols they worshipped. And because they were scared of the message he brought, they decided they would approach him and offer him some things to stop his message. And they sent one of their elders called Utbah to converse with the Prophet Muhammad. Utbah got up and went to the Prophet Muhammad and he found him sitting tranquilly. Then he came up to the Prophet Muhammad and said, O oh Muhammad, who is better? You or Abdullah? Abdullah was the father of the Prophet Muhammad and he was not Muslim. The Prophet Muhammad remained silent in respect for his father. Then Utbah said, Who is better? You or Abdul Muttalib? Abdul Muttalib was the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad and he was not Muslim. The Prophet Muhammad remained silent in respect for his grandfather. Utbah started to become angry and said, If you think that they are better than you, then they worship the gods you have insulted. And if you think that you are better than them, then speak. We may hear you say it. Utbah was shouting, displaying his anger, as the Prophet just listened silently. If you are doing all this with a view to gain wealth, then we will join together to give you the greater rights than any person from our tribe. And if you are doing all this because you desire women, then choose amongst us the best women, and we will give you ten more like her. If ambition moves you, then we will make you our chief. Utba continued offering, but the question here was, if a man claims to be a prophet of God, and he was in the beginning of his message, why is he doing all this? What goal he is trying to achieve? If he was a liar and not the messenger of God, why would he refuse all that? Mm. He wants fame. I would agree with you. In the case of if he was in the middle of his message and he had so many followers, but he was offered leadership, wealth, and women to stop his message in the beginning of his message when he had a few followers. If he was a liar, why would he refuse all that if those things were what he was trying to get? Utbah continued to speak with the Prophet Muhammad in an insulting manner, but the Prophet did not interrupt him. After Utbah had made his offers, he was waiting for a response. Then the Prophet asked him, 
Have you finished, O Abu Walid? His name Utba, but the Prophet called Utba by the name that most beloved to Utba, which is Abu Walid. Despite him disrespect the Prophet Muhammad, Utba was not surprised at the manner of the Prophet Muhammad, and he simply replied, "Yeah." The Prophet then recited verses from Quran. I cannot tell you the rest of the story because I don't want to take up more of your time. But look at how he was respectful to the one who was disrespectful and an enemy to him. He did not interrupt him and say, "Shut up! I'm a Prophet and the Messenger of Allah." The Prophet listened silently to him. Then he said. Have you finished, O Abu Wali? This was the manner of the Prophet Muhammad. He was a man who was always gentle when he dealt with people, and he is the best example to follow. This all took place in Mecca, where the unbelievers kicked him out, where they killed and tortured his companions. After his exile, when the Prophet returned to Mecca in victory. He looked around at Mecca and he looked at its residents. He reflected upon how they had fought against him, put him under unbearable stress, turned people away from him, murdered and tortured his companions. He began to pass by all the places where he was abused and ridiculed. How often did he hear in those places, "All oh, crazy, all oh, magician, all oh, liar"? On that day, the prompts God gave to him had come true, and he passed through them as a powerful leader. So, how did he feel as he entered Mecca? He didn't say, "Today is a day of retaliation, and I will kill." He did not strut around with pride and arrogance. No, instead, he bowed his head in humility and reverence to his Lord upon witnessing the victory that Allah has blessed him with. He had the chance for revenge, but he did not take it out because of his mercy. This was the manner of the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Could this person be a liar or criminal as the ignorant people have accused him? And why should he lie? He didn't look to glorify himself. All that he was doing was telling what was revealed to him and calling people to worship the one and only true God. The same message as that to all the messengers before him. Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, peace be upon them all. He did not command people to believe in him only. He commanded us to believe in the, all the messengers and prophets. And to deny one of them is to deny the religion of Islam. And if he was looking to glorify himself, he was offered leadership, wealth, and women to stop his message when he was in fragile situation. And he was in the beginning of his message, and there were only a few followers with him. So why were they offering these things to Muhammad if he was in fragile situation? Why did not they kill him and end everything? Because Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, was one of the leaders of Mecca. He was not Muslim, but he was protecting the Prophet Muhammad. Even though they tried secretly, but they failed. Abu Talib knew that the Prophet Muhammad was messenger of God. But he did not change his religion because he was afraid of people saying that he left the religion of his forefathers. There are many people who don't want to change their religion because they were born and reside in that faith. Don't be that person. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and I bear witness that Jesus is the slave of Allah and his messenger. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video. Oh, how we pray that on that day. We'll be with those to whom Allah will say, Peace be with you. I am pleased with you.